Hey, so you just got around strobes for the first time. Maybe you were at a workshop and they were always set up, or maybe you went to a store, checked them out, hung out with some friends that are shooting with them, or maybe you actually bought some and you're looking at the back after you turned them on, you're like, whoa, what is all this? What are these numbers? What is this decimal point stuff? What is, is that fractions? What is this? What is this? Is this fourth grade math class finally gonna come into use? What are these numbers? Do you even need to know what these numbers mean? <sighs> Breathe, I'm gonna dismantle all this for you, so stick around, we've got a lot to talk about. There's that power on sound. You guys know that one, right? <laughs> What's going on, everyone? My name is Seth Miranda. I'm a pro photographer right here in New York. Welcome to my studio here in Manhattan. Sorry for this weird kind of intrusive composition going on here. I just want to make sure you can see the back of these lights as best as you can. Now, not that you're not worth setting up a second camera for, but come on. Uh, if you're a photo nerd, this might be a channel for you. You might want to consider hitting subscribe. And this is actually a response to a bunch of comments I've been seeing pop up on my way older live demos where I show a bunch of techniques and maybe I gloss over some of the beginner stuff a little bit too much. And I always get a question that says, okay, yeah, yeah, that's cool, but what was the power setting of your light? And I'm guessing they're asking me that because they think if they just set the light to that, they just go, yay, that looks like that. And it doesn't work like that. And in fact, I'll even tell them, yeah, it's a, a 6.3 or, or, or it's a quarter power or whatever. And then I'll follow it up by it doesn't even matter. It's, it, what matters is why it's there, right? So what are we talking about here? Well, first, let me go over what I got here. This is a Profoto B10X Plus. It is a 500 watt second strobe. And this is a Flashpoint Explorer 100, or you might know it as a Godox 80. 100, which is a 100 watt second micro, uh, I call them micro monolights, but they're, they're called like mini monolights or whatever. Uh, I just wanted two lights that were very different, but I also wanted the two, two lights that speak the two dialects of the same language that we're talking about, which is the range of power settings in your light. But what do they mean? Well, first of all, I guess I should say, Watt seconds, what is that? Let's go over that really quickly. And I have a link down below to a live stream I did that's pretty long, but you see in real time what watt seconds mean with the lightning and all this other kind of stuff. Uh, watt seconds, in a nutshell, do not mean the power output of the light. No, it means the potential of the light. The power here at 500 watt seconds doesn't mean the same for every light out there that's 500 watt seconds or rated I should say at 500 watt seconds because there's so many other factors that affect what the output of the light is. It could be something like the density of this glass, the beam angle, meaning if it shoots like a wider beam angle, it could actually come off as less powerful than if it was more focused and condensed and really making that light optimized or more efficient and getting you more power out of it, but you get less spread. Everything's a trade-off in, in photography. Don't ever forget that. But watt seconds really, it's, it's, it's such a, it's a metric that we lean on to like sell the lights really, right? Like to give you an idea of, well, that one's more powerful than that one. But in reality, it's it's just the potential of the light. And it really only kind of correlates to the same brand. Like this light is 250 watt seconds, and the next light in the lineup is 500 watt seconds. And because we're working in stops of light, it's one stop more power out of that light. 250 to 500 is double the the power, the watt seconds, which means that you're getting one more stop of light. But there's more to it than that. Uh, let's say you are at full power at 250 watt seconds on the first light, and then the second light is 500 watt seconds, but you put it at half power, which in theory should be 250 watt seconds. Well, the 500 watt second light is probably going to one, be a faster recycle time, and two, have a shorter flash duration at the same power, but they're not the same output, okay? I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole. This is about these scales back here. I'm sorry if like I've been in and out of focus because this is kind of nuts. Uh, anyway, let's get back on track here. What do these scales mean? Well, the thing about this is that, like I said, it's the same language, just different dialects. These are stops of light, just like the exposure in your camera, just like f-stops, just like shutter speeds, just like ISO or ISO, whatever you wanna say. I don't care how you pronounce it. If you close down your aperture, you're limiting the light. If you open up the aperture, you're letting more light in, but you can close it down in increments of stops. We call this 
in photography are measurement, right? So shutter speeds, you go from 1 25th to 2 50th of a second, that's one stop, right? And that means that you lost half your light. But if you open up from 1 25th to 1 60th, you gained more light, right? So that's kind of what's happening here. If you're looking at your scale, this is one through 10, which I think a lot more lights are leaning more and more towards as we go forward uh, with seeing new product out there. But there are eons of lighting out there that have this, the fraction method, which I'm sorry for this flickering going on here. I couldn't get it to a frame rate that still was on exposure that stopped this flickering. I apologize about that. But let's, let's really show you what's going on here. So even though these are completely different power lights here. Like this is 100 watt seconds, this is 500 watt seconds, and clearly there's a major difference. They still have the same scale, which is what my point is. If that, if this is at one over one, which is full power, as opposed to one over two, which would be half power. It looks like a half, it is a half. Over here, it's at full power. Well, nine is one stop away from full power, that's half. So it's half power now. I know what you're thinking. You're like, no, if I put it at five, that's gotta be half power. No, that's half of the range, one through 10. But the power, half power is nine. Case in point, this goes from one over one to one over two, that's half, then quarter, then eighth, then 16th, then 32nd, 64th, 128th, 256th, right? Always half, 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 half. Same thing here, if I go, Full power 10, half power 9, quarter power 8, eighth power at 7, 16th power at 6, 32nd at 5, 64th at 4, 3 is going to be 128th, 256th, and 5 12th of a, of a power at 1, if you want to put it there. But now you're going to say, but Seth, that I kind of get that, right? I hope you guys get that. But then what's all this in-between stuff? What's all this 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, 6? Well, that's tenths of a stop. So you have that over here in fractions as well. It just goes by plus 0.1 through, through 9, right? Plus 0.2, plus 0.3, plus 0.4. Over here, it's just plus 0.1, plus 0.1, plus 0.2, plus 0.3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine, and then once you go to 10, it's a full stop, you're going to seven. So you can really dial in how much output you really want, and a lot of people in the comments that want to hate on expensive light brands are probably like, oh, it's, it's gar that doesn't really do that. Yes, it does, we've shown it live, I'm not even gonna bother doing it here, but it's nice that you're able to do that, and this is kind of the beauty of modern lighting. You're gonna see some stuff out there that's either more budget friendly or have been out there for quite a while, and you'll see plus 0.3, plus 0.7, or then plus one. Same thing as minus, right? Just like so I can go up, I can go down. That's thirds of a stop. 0.3, one third, 0.7, that's two thirds, and then you go to the third third, that's one full stop. So if you're using older lights and you don't have tents, it's still not a full stop, it's just not as micro adjustable as something like this or like this. Although we are seeing in this modern era, even budget lighting having the tense ability in increments of light, okay? So this is really helpful because no matter what the light is, you're going in a scale that's similar, but they're completely different outputs. Because if you think about it, and I hate saying it like this, but let's let's do it. If I'm at 10, that's, and, and again, watt seconds is not output, but let's, let's, for argument's sake, at 10, 500 watt seconds. Well, if I put it at half power, nine, like we just talked about, this is 250 watt seconds now, sort of, right? And you can think about that, like let's say if I had a B10X Plus like this, which is 500 watt seconds, and in my kit, I had their other light, a B10X, which is 250 watt seconds, you can kind of ballpark it to get yourself going that if I put my, at the same distance, at the same uh, modifier, all that stuff, if I wanted to put it in the same ballpark of power, I can pet this to nine, and it should kind of put me in there. So it gives you a, a scale to work with, but it's not, it's not definitive, because watch, if this is nine at half, well, I put this at half power, 
Well, half power here and half power here definitely don't equal the same output because 100 watt seconds quickly turns into 50 watt seconds. 500 watt seconds turned into 250 watt seconds. So while they're, the number, the idea of the number is the same, the actual what it means isn't the same. So it's not a matter of, oh, I set this to nine. It's a matter of, no, it's at half output. But then you're gonna say to me, well, if that's saying half and that's just basically giving me the fractions that are over here, why don't you just give me the fractions? Well, I'm in the camp of the one through 10. Here's why. In photography, in lighting, we're talking about stops of light. We're not really looking at uh, fractions so much when we're talking about uh, where we're trying to go. And, and let me explain what I'm trying to say here. So one through 10, let's say I have two lights set up and for, to make it super simple, they are the same light, same modifier, same distance, same condition, same everything. But if I just wanted to put, get a ratio going of one stop away or two stops away from the light next to it, I set this to eight, set that to 10, I know I'm two stops. So this is working in stops of light, not really the numbers of one through 10, but the stops. So you can think of it more as, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter if this says eight or whatever, what I care about is how many stops away it is from my exposure, because here's the thing I want you to remember more than anything, these numbers are not your exposure. Say it with me now. The power of my light is not my exposure. All this stuff is doing is giving you a scale to get you back to exposure, which is what you set your camera at. So if I'm shooting at f8, these power settings are gonna be different to get me to an exposure that will register in my camera at f8, whether it's, that, so that's on exposure, not over or under. Think of it this way. Maybe f8 is full power on something with 100 watt seconds, but over here, it might be something that's like five or six because I have so much more power to work with in here but now I know the stops of light. And for years, Profo didn't even give you the readout value on your remote. And you know what? Not many people cared because the only time it mattered was one, if you needed to know if you were out of power, meaning you were all the way maxed out or all the way to the bottom, which does happen sometimes. Two, if you were worried about something like flash duration because the lower the power settings in the light, the faster your flash duration is usually. So in those situations, you might wanna be like, oh, I know it'll have a faster flash duration at this power setting. But other than that, it didn't matter what that readout was, it mattered what you were getting. And that is the exposure that you were set at. And don't forget, everything changes when you put in distance of light to subject, meaning if I had this at eight pointed here, it's blown out across the room, not so much. So what does the power setting mean if you're trying to replicate something I'm doing and you go, hey, what's the power setting of that light? Well, if you don't have it at the same distance, the exact same situation, the same modifier, everything, you know, blows through diffusion in a soft box, reflects off an umbrella. This is an all white room. I might get, uh, you know, a little help there with all the reflection as opposed to in an all black room where I might need to judge up the power a little bit on my light to get to a ballpark figure like that, right? I, I shouldn't say ballpark figure, but you know what I'm trying to say. Everything's a factor. All this is giving you is kind of a scale to work within, which is stops of light, which you've been doing in your camera all along. The difference is that that is your exposure. This scale of stops get you to exposure. Always keep that in mind. And, and I was thinking maybe we should set up an example where I, I, we put up the, the two light. You know what, let's go do that. Uh, future, let's go cut to future set. All right, so I called her agent and I got Sheila in here last minute and I, I know, I know, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's the summer. I know you've got a lot of plans. Look, we appreciate it. We all appreciate Sheila being here, right? Let her know in those comments. But what are we doing here? Well, I'm making matching light sources here. So we have two B10X pluses with one by four strips with grids on them. So same light source, same uh, modifier, and I even have them on stands that are measured to be exactly the same, same angle, same everything. So now we have two mirrored lights in the same exact condition, so we should be able to show you guys what I'm talking about here. So if I go and I get to an exposure that eliminates the ambient light like we always do, ISO 100 at F8, if I take this shot with no 
strobes, we get a black frame. Now we know I'm only recording my lights, right? Cool. If I turn this, if I turn the, uh, the strobes on and I go to TTL, meaning that it's going to meter the light for me and set this power value based on the exposure I have set in my camera, which is ISO 100 at F8. We're gonna get a number on those lights, right? So when I go over to Sheila, I take a shot, TTL gives me 5.8. Okay, what does that mean? Nothing really, it's just what TTL said this light has to go to in order to give me the exposure for F8 at ISO 100, getting me to the exposure that's in my camera. That's where the exposure is set. So if I take group B, which is this light, and I, I take it and I drop it by one stop. So we have 5.8, now we're 4.8. If I take a look at her, click, that's one stop away. Take it down another one to 3.8. That's two, this is two stops away. Go one more to 2.8, that's three stops away. And you can see how quickly we're losing light, right? In fact, if I went to like 1.8, it probably won't even do anything. And then if I shut off group A and I just keep the one light that we dropped four stops, we're probably not gonna see anything, right? So it's like very, very faint, if anything at all. But I can bring my exposure back up to 2.8. That's, that's a stop up. Go to 3.8. Now we know that 3.8 is two stops away from the 5.8 that we need, right? So we're two stops away, boom. Now we go to 4.8. And now we go to 5.8. And now we're back to exposure with the single light. If I put on group A, we should get an identical photo to what we started when both lights were on and we're pretty much there. So it has nothing to do with what the actual number is. It has to do with how many stops you're down or over or whatever because it's just going to fluctuate the power of that light to get you back to the exposure you set on your camera. Okay, so you can see there that we're working in real stops of light, right? I'm taking the power down on one, I'm bringing it back up, and we're right there at exposure when we want it to be based on what we set our camera to. And you know, this works the other way as well. Let's say you said to yourself, I'm shooting at F11, and F11 is nine on this, in this situation, my light is reading nine, and that's giving me the exposure I want. But you're saying, man, I really want a shallower depth of field. Well, I wanna shoot it at F8, okay. So you open your camera up to F8, this becomes overexposed. Remember, this fluctuates to get you back to exposure. Well, if you opened up to F8, you're letting more light in by one stop. Dial this back by one stop and you're back. The only thing that would change is if you were, the only thing that would affect that is if you move the light somehow or your subject moved because the distance changes. Obviously, closer you get to light, the brighter it gets, the further back, the dimmer it gets, right? I hate talking about it like that, but less, ex more exposed, less exposed, I guess I should say. But see what I'm saying? It, the number here is just to get you to, to go up and down to work with where you're at for your actual exposure, which is in your camera. Anyway, I really hope this is helpful. I'm sure this went on way too long. I, I was like, I'll make a quick video about this. If you guys need some extra help, I got a 24 seven support system that is completely free. It's the Discord. Hit the link down below. You can share work, ask questions, answer questions. If you're having a problem going, I don't know what this is, means and I'm posted in there, I guarantee you someone from around the world will give you a full on answer and then give you 20 different perspectives on as well. So hit the link, join there. We're about a thousand members. And for all the people that are going, hey, where can I see some of your work? Uh, boom, go ahead and check out my Instagram. I got a whole bunch of work up on there and I'd appreciate the follow in there as well. I do a lot of promoting through stories and you guys can stay up on workshops, events, what's going on, BTS, all sorts of stuff. Uh, go ahead and hit um, subscribe on that. Oh, subscribe, follow, follow. I don't know, all the social, whatever. Let me know down below if this was helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe and the bell to get notified and put more videos like this. Hopefully this wasn't ridiculously in and out of focus because I'm sure it's like playing games between me and the whatever. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your time. I will see you on the next one later.